In early 2022, Dwayne Wade and Dirk Nowitzki sat side by side during an NBA on TNT broadcast. The air between these two Hall of Famers was light, the conversation friendly. Reggie Miller made sure to point out that that represented a shift. Do you want me to switch seats? Is there still history here between you two? The history on paper is obvious. Nowitzki's Dallas Mavericks met Wade's Miami Heat twice in the NBA Finals. They had a rivalry. But when Dirk said this, Are you sure? <laughs> he knew Reggie wasn't just talking about rivalry. He was talking about beef. The 2006 NBA Finals presented a new, huge opportunity for either Wade or Nowitzki. There could only be one. Dirk entered the league back in 1998, when the Mavericks made moves to acquire the gangly German, then pair him with another bottle blonde newcomer, Steve Nash. The next eight seasons saw Dirk crush one assumption after another making the Mavs look smart for valuing him more than everyone else did. Not just a novelty bench player, Dirk could contribute big minutes. Not just a catch-and-shoot stiff, he proved creative and feisty enough to be a top scorer. Not just Nash's co-star, he could lead a great team by himself. That was where we found Nowitzki in 2006. In the two years after Mark Cuban's franchise let a future MVP walk away, Dirk eased the pain of Nash's departure by ascending to the game's upper echelon. A tip-top scorer on a tip-top team in the conversation for league MVP. And the spring of 06 brought more not-justs. Dirk kept doing new stuff. He led Dallas's first ever playoff series win against the rival big brother San Antonio Spurs. He led Dallas to an extremely satisfying six game conference final victory over Nash and the Suns to secure the Mavericks first ever trip to the NBA Finals. By winning it all, Dirk could erase all doubt. He could turn 28 years old as a champion and franchise hero, singularly powerful, not just anything except a bona fide legend. In the way stood the Miami Heat, led by a player who had ascended even faster. Dwayne Wade got drafted by the Heat in 2003, immediately became Miami's clear-cut centerpiece, led them to a playoff series victory as a rookie, and became an all-star by his second season. And while Dirk's employer squandered his rising co-star in free agency, Wade watched Miami boss Pat Riley move heaven and earth to add star power in 2004. It's Shaq. This is a fun distinction, and I think it's worth appreciating to understand the rivalry and beef to come. Dirk lost his best ever teammate, then proved he could carry the Mavericks. Dwayne proved he could carry the Heat, then gained his best ever teammate, up to that point anyway, more to come. But for the time being, we had the 2006 NBA Finals, and for all Miami's big name talent, Dirk and the Mavs had the upper hand. They'd foreshadowed as much in the regular season. Dirk's Mavs had beaten Wade's Heat almost every time they met, including what Shaq called a good old-fashioned Texas beatdown in February 06. Many experts favored the Mavs, and Dallas validated that choice by winning games one and two by comfortable margins. Dirk Nowitzki stood two wins away from that legacy-securing, doubt-obliterating title, and if he'd hit this last-second free throw instead of rimming it out, or if he had avoided Wade's fingertips with this buzzer-beating lob, who knows, maybe he could have taken game three in Miami. Instead? That narrow defeat began a sickening turn for Dirk and the Mavs. The Heat won Game 4 in a romp to tie the series. For Game 5, things got peculiar. While Dirk had an off night, Wade racked up 43 points thanks in large part to his 25 free throw attempts. 
That number is still a single game finals record for anyone but Shaq in 2000 when he was getting fouled on purpose. This was a controversial amount of whistleblowing. It still is. And it included one of the most scrutinized calls ever. Wade driving and drawing a Nowitzki foul, securing two free throws to take the lead with less than two seconds remaining in game five. That made it three straight wins for Miami. And it left the Mavs feeling very sour. Nowitzki got fined for kicking the ball into the stands, then he said not only had he not fouled Wade, but Wade pushed off multiple people to make that play. As recently as 2016, Nowitzki hadn't gotten over that officiating, and he's not alone. And Game 6 in Dallas was more of the same. Wade played brilliantly and drew 21 free throw attempts. He missed two critical ones down the stretch, but no one remembers that because the Heat pulled it out for their first ever championship. There was plenty to whine about, and you better believe Mark Cuban and company whined, but the outcome was the outcome. Wade was a winner in his youth. Dirk was a loser in his prime. He and the Mavs blew it. This hurt Dirk's reputation, not to mention his psyche. It was fodder for the doubters, and Wade pressed salt in the wound. Before the first Mavs Heat rematch in January of 07, Nowitzki was one of several Dallas players to publicly mourn their finals collapse and suggest they had given away the series. Wade took offense. I imagine he hadn't forgotten the accusations of a friendly whistle in the 06 finals, and these new comments pushed him over the edge. Wade pointed the finger straight at Dirk. Dirk was the reason the Mavs lost the 2006 championship. Dirk wasn't the leader he's supposed to be in the closing moments. This, to me, is ground beef zero. Dirk was like, whoa, man, didn't know you were so sensitive. No personal issues, said Dwayne. Just don't disrespect my team like that. As ever, Mark Cuban was the loudest person involved. He blogged about it. And Dirk and Wade didn't see much more of each other in 07, but things were pretty tense at All-Star Weekend. And Wade's ad hominem attack echoed throughout an even more humiliating playoff outcome for Nowitzki and the Mavs. Dirk earned 2007 Most Valuable Player and led Dallas to its best ever regular season, only to suffer one of the most shocking first-round playoff upsets in league history. He was the very rare MVP to collect his trophy after getting eliminated from the playoffs. A grim scene. And then Dallas fell short again in 08, and 09, and 2010. Meltdown after meltdown. Now in his 30s, with only so much star-caliber basketball left in the tank, Dirk faced the risk of a legacy defined in part by the nasty defeat and nasty appraisal dealt to him by Dwayne Wade. Never mind that the Heat had themselves fallen off. Wade had his ring. The summer of 2010 was pivotal, for NBA history and also for our beef. Wade and Nowitzki were both free agents. To ensure Wade would stay and to pursue more rings, the Heat assembled one of the greatest and most famous collections of stars ever. Dirk, meanwhile, just kinda quietly re-signed in Dallas, accepting a significant hometown discount. Dirk's decision stoked new narratives. Never mind that he admitted the super team offer, even with Miami, would have been tempting. In any event, the Miami Bonanza created immediate pressure on Wade to win his second ring. Dirk? Well, even after the Mavs traded for Tyson Chandler, no one, including Shams Charania, expected anything but the usual. As the 2011 playoffs approached, Plenty of people guessed the Mavs would once again fail to make it out of the first round. But Dirk and company caught fire, and after taking down the young Thunder in the conference finals, 
met that super team in a surprise finals rematch of 06. This time, Miami took the early series lead, two games to one after Dirk missed a last second attempt to tie game three. Tough shot. The story verged on becoming a repeat, but Dirk saved the Mavs late in game four. Playing through the symptoms of a sinus infection, Nowitzki spearheaded a Dallas comeback and this time delivered in the clutch to tie the series. In a way, that was Dirk doing exactly what Wade said he didn't back in 06. Even ill, Nowitzki displayed leadership in the closing moments. But Wade certainly didn't acknowledge that. He thought the media made too big a deal of Nowitzki playing through illness. Here, on national television, is how he and LeBron made that point. Yeah, they are pretending to cough. Pretty rude. That's beef, baby. When asked about this mockery in retirement, Wade sounds like he still feels bad. It was the folly of youth, not something he would ever teach his own kids to do. At the time, though, Wade was totally unapologetic, committed to the beef. But this time, Dirk got the last laugh. In Game 5, an efficient 29 points to go up 3-2. In Game 6, victory in Miami, and with it, two firm hands on the Larry O'Brien Trophy, a championship that hardly anyone saw coming. Revenge. So was Dirk motivated by beef? Did watching his rival and established critic make fun of his sickness push him to victory? Dirk certainly didn't think it was cool. Well, I just thought it was a little childish, a little, little ignorant. But no, he insisted he wasn't fueled by any animus for Wade and friends. It's not going to add anything extra to me. This, this is the NBA Finals. If you need an extra motivation, you have a problem. In retirement, Dirk says basically the same thing, and this makes sense. He already had plenty to prove, plenty to motivate him. But Dirk's teammate on the champion Mavs, J.J. Barea, saw something different. He saw beef. He hated Miami. He hated Le LeBron, Wade, uh, Bosh. He's never going to say that, but he couldn't stand it. And he saw a star fueled by that beef. When LeBron and Wade uh, started making fun of him, by cuffing when he got a little sick, that clip really hurt him. And that gave him a little bit extra that he didn't need, but it gave him a little extra to, to finish him off. Beef is not a clean source of energy, but it is a good one. And while Wade never got a re-rematch with the Mavericks, he does point to that 2011 disaster as an experience that shaped his approach and allowed him in the heat to win titles thereafter. I think that's why this beef never went beyond some petty comments and fake coughing. Both stars ultimately achieved resolution, met and exceeded individual expectations, and secured legendary legacies. If either Wade or Nowitzki had an unhappy ending, had to retire a loser, then this beef may have spiraled. Instead, they get to be villains in each other's heroic tales. Things are fine now, even if they were frosty in the past. That doesn't mean they're great friends, though, or that they're past needling one another. When Wade's 2018-2019 farewell tour passed through Dallas, he took a moment to recreate his ball toss to end the 06 Finals. All in good fun, but when explaining that decision to retire at 37, Wade offered a quote that Mavs fans read as an actual shot at the older Nowitzki, who stuck around through age 40, even though he no longer had it, mostly riding the bench. So, yes, it's all cool now in retirement. Everybody got closure, they exchange jerseys, they do interviews together, whatever. But Reggie knows, you know, and we know. You can't tell NBA history without a chapter about Dirk Nowitzki and Dwayne Wade. And that chapter isn't complete without some pages of prime beef. So who do you think came out looking better in that beef? 
Dirk Nowitzki or Dwayne Wade. You can cast your vote by clicking on one of these episodes of Rewinder about one guy or the other. Enjoy!